In this lesson, we're going to learn about number sentences and the properties of equality. Before we do that, however, let's clarify the difference between an expression and an equation. An expression is simply a mathematical statement. It contains numbers, symbols such as variables, and operators such as addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Polynomials are examples of expressions, for example, 3x squared plus 2x minus 3, or 7x minus 4. Each of these are expressions. When we connect them with an equal sign, we have what's called an equation. An equation is simply two expressions connected with an equal sign. We've worked with all kinds of equations, including fractions and decimals, and we've seen all kinds of expressions as we work with simplifying polynomials. Let's begin by taking a look at exercise 1. Exercise 1 contains a series of mathematical statements. Your mission is to determine which ones are equations and which ones are expressions. Please pause the video here and complete the exercise. We find that the first one is an equation. Notice it has an equal sign, which shows an equality. The second one is an expression. There's no equal sign. The third one is an equation, because we have two expressions connected with an equal sign. And the final exercise is an expression. There's no equality to be found. We can have equations in all kinds of different forms. We can have equations with variables. We can have equations with only numbers. An equation that has only numbers is called a number sentence. A number sentence is a statement of equality between two numerical expressions. Numerical is the key word. If there's a variable, it's no longer a number sentence. An example of a number sentence, 3 plus 5 equals 4 plus 4. An example that is not a number sentence, 3x plus 5 equals 2. x is an unknown. It's not a number sentence. Number sentences are either true or false. Let's take a look at two examples. If we're given the equation 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 12 squared, we can evaluate that. When we do, we see that it's not true. 9 plus 16 is 25, not 144. Another example, 3 squared times 4 squared equals 12 squared. We can calculate that. 9 times 16 is 144. And so the second number sentence is true. Now, what's most interesting is that when we solved an equation, we were actually looking to find the value for x that we could put in its place that would cause the equation to be a true number sentence. For instance, when we solved the equation x plus 2 equals 3, we ended up with x equals 1. If we put 1 in place of x, we have 1 plus 2 equals 3. Well, that's true. Both sides have a value of 3. Sometimes we have a special thing happen. Take a look at this equation, x plus 2 equals x plus 2. If we start putting numbers in for x, let's suppose 1, we get 1 plus 2 equals 1 plus 2. 3 equals 3. That's true. The same thing happens if we put 2 in place of x. We have 2 plus 2 on each side. Same thing for 3, and 4, and 5. When we have an equation that's always true, we call it an identity. That's an important word that you want to remember. Be sure to write that down. The second exercise is all about determining whether number sentences are true or false. Look on each side of the equality and calculate its value. If both sides are equal, then we have a true number sentence. If they're not, then the number sentence is false. Please pause the video here and complete the exercise. We found that the first one was false, the second true, and the third true. Number 4 was true, 5 and 6 were both false. Pi equals 3.14159 is worth a quick mention because it looks like, gee, maybe it's true. But remember, pi has an infinite number of digits and even this is only a rounded version. Therefore, it's not equal. It's a false statement. Finally, the last two are false. A good question to ask is whether a number sentence can be both true and false at the same time, or if, if it can be both not true and not false. Well, the answer is no. 
it's either true or it's false. It has to be one or the other, and it cannot be both at the same time. Now, let's talk about the properties of equality. The properties of equality are what allow us to do a whole lot of things when we solve equations. For instance, we know we can add the same amount to both sides. x minus 5 equals 4 can be solved to be x equals 9. That property is known as the addition property of equality. It states if you have two equal amounts and you add the same amount to both, then you still have two equal amounts. The second problem, x plus 7 equals 12, is an example of how we can subtract the same amount from both sides of the equation. The property that allows us to do that is known as the subtraction property of equality. If you have two equal quantities and you take the same amount away from both of them, you still have two equal quantities left in each of those. The third example, 6x equals 72, is easily solved by dividing both sides of the equation by 6. That's the division property of equality, and it says that you could divide two equal quantities by the same amount, then the results will still be equal. Finally, we know we can multiply both sides of an equation by the same number, and that's known as the multiplication property of equality. If you have two equal amounts and you multiply them by the same, then you still have two equal amounts. These are useful properties because they allow us to justify some of the things that we do. Take a look at this equation. In the first step, we subtracted 5 from each side of the equation. The rule that allows us to do that is the subtraction property of equality. Then in our second step, we divided both sides by 3. The property that allows us to do that is the division property of equality. Because of those properties, we now know that x equals 55 thirds. In other words, if you put 55 thirds in place of x in the equation, you would have a true number sentence. Exercise 2 is for you to try. You're given an equation, and we'd like for you to identify the property used in each step. Please pause the video here and complete the exercise. Our first step was to add 3 to both sides of the equation. That's the addition property of equality. Our second step was to divide both sides by 8. That's the division property of equality. That gave us x equals 34 eighths, and if we plug 34 eighths into our equation, we'll have a true number sentence. Our third example is for you to try. Please pause the video here and complete the exercise. In this exercise, we begin by multiplying both sides of the equation by 4. That's allowed by the multiplication property of equality. Then, we added 1 to each side of the equation. That's allowed by the addition property of equality. Finally, we divided both sides of the equation by 3. That's allowed by the division property of equality. We end up with x equals 7, and if you were to put 7 in place of x in the original equation, you would have a true number sentence. And so here's what you need to remember. An equation is an expression equal to an expression. An expression in itself has no equal sign, but an equation does because it's comparing two of them. A number sentence is an equation that has no variables, and it has a true or a false value. An equation that is always true is called an identity. We learned several properties, including the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division property of equality. These properties allow us to justify our work in algebra and are really the foundation for all equation solving. This is everything you need to know to get started working with number sentences and with properties.